welcome to the MBS show, episode 160. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is James Cork. Hey guys, I'm back to a normal episode, not reviewing anything. <laughs> not yet. I'm not making any promises. I'm not making any, any promises. I might take this Samus Amiibo figure and start reviewing it. Oh, you got a Samus figure? Yeah, I got it on my local Toys R Us. I got it like two weeks ago or so. Oh, cool. I was so lucky. But funny is I don't need more amiibos. I have Samus and Pikachu. That's all I care about. I don't <laughs> need anything else. Kirby? Not even Kirby? Uh, I don't care for Kirby. These are my two main characters that I fight with in Smash Bros. I don't need anything else. I swear to God, I don't need any other amiibos. Hmm? To okay. me, the craze ends right there. <laughs> all right. Besides, cool, cool. 11 euros for each. That is a that is a robbery. Really? I could. Come on. Mm, okay, the exchange rate from places to places differs. To me, they're... That's best... like... That's like 13 or 14 dollars. It's crazy. True, true. But like I said, um, each currency is different. So to me, they're about 65 bucks. So they're a bit pricey on my end. Also joining us today is Ro. Hello, all you happy people. Hey there, Ro. How are you, man? Oh, sleepy, sleepy, sleepy. So sleepy. <laughs> I was up all night watching people live stream the art. Not much, not much sleep there. Then I had to go to the family gathering for Easter. Happy Easter, everyone, by the way. Oh, happy Easter. Oh, right. Happy yes. Easter. Had a really big meal. Now I feel even more sleepy than I was before. I am so <laughs> hitting the hay after this episode. Yay! Uh, food is good. Also joining us today is Kick. Huh, he said, "Hey, we're bronies." That makes that funny. Uh God. So how are you, man? I haven't slept since the start of the episode. What? I have been making videos, art, comics, updates. So you're gonna see a very hyperactive Kick this episode. Oh, I hope so, man. I hope I so. I blame the sugar, sugary drinks and chocolate. <laughs> Not even caffeine. Oh, yeah, I'd say caffeine, but I don't, I'm not allowed caffeine. The, uh, the police look at me and get taken away. <laughs> well, uh, what happened last time you were on caffeine kick? There was a fire. <laughs> Why was there a fire? Because I had too much caffeine. Oh. You had caffeine? No. Oh. Anyway. Mm. Okay. Season five, season five, season five, season five. All right, all right, all right. But anyway. Oh, God. Don't get ahead of ourselves. Don't get ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, I'm guessing we're all hyped for season five, and everyone watched it. And uh, James, if I'm not mistaken, you, me, Silver, are going to do a first impression or review of it? We are going to be what? doing uh, We are going to be doing a full Flex episode review with whoever else wants to join us in the review, of course. We are not excluding anyone. Um, uh, I've got my arm up except... right now. You can't see, but I've got my arm up. Uh, we, uh, no, we, we are not excluding anybody from uh, joining us in reviewing the episode, of course. But I well, don't want to overload poor Silver. He already has enough job already, uh, enough work already. But yeah, yeah, we're going to be reviewing the episode around sometime next week. Probably, that is, it's probably. going to, the episode review is going to come out by the time episode three is already out on the internet. Yeah. And, um, yeah, we are doing it for the very easy, for a very simple reason is that first impressions are good, but sometimes you have to give an episode some thought. And you have to really think about it, and you have to figure out, yeah, do I like this episode? Do I hate this episode? Is this meh? Does it have, like, a more good parts than bad parts? Or is it a terrible a terrible episode all around, but it has one good element to it? So hmm. you, you you need time to take, to, to, to take a step back and figure out what you think of the episodes. So, yeah... We, we, don't worry, we're going to be talking about season five, but we are not going to be re- reviewing the episode on this episode. On the door. yeah, all right. Even though that sounds redundant. Yeah. So I, I'm guessing King wants to join in. Yes, 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 yes. Remember how in previous episodes, and James warned me, uh, I believe it was in the Twilight episode we spoke about that if you don't feel the hype, it might ruin the episode for you. Yeah. I got about thirty seconds into um, the episode, and then suddenly all that hype. <laughs> from when they first announced season five suddenly exploded and i actually did a first i did a blind reaction video and i look really bored and then this then the theme starts and then my face explodes and i'm shaking all jittery and ah, oh, you were right you james you were right about not being bothered about the episode until it airs but the second it aired i was like <laughs> like shaking with energy just really excited and giddy <laughs> yay so 
any bad mood I couldn't have possibly been in. It's like, oh, I've had a bad week. <gasps> but Saturday's Go coming. On. Yay! <laughs> so, it's going to be great. Yay, pony Until makes everything ends. better. Oh. All right, cool, 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 cool. So, that will be around next week with episode... One, two, and three. So we'll do that. And as for the comic reviews, we'll be doing that too. Um, don't mind us. We'll, we're still thinking about scheduling and how to make things work. It, things have been a bit derpy since comic has been split into three parts now, James. Yeah, exactly. We are, uh, we are going to be reviewing the comic stuff. Yeah. So there's the main comic, the Friends Forever comic and the Finship is Magic comic. I'm glad to know that Finship only has, what, six comics? So, yeah. Oh, God, the Finship is Magic comics are going to be awesome. Yeah, I mean, I've read Sombra, and not bad. I like it. And, well, also comic re- episode reviews. So we have that in the works. So we are going to be pretty busy with the reviews. And, like I said, if there's a reviewer out there who's interested in trying to do a episode review with us, do let us know and we'll see what we can do. But anywho, moving on to more important topics is housekeeping. And Ro, you mind reading this? I'm on it. Yeah, yeah. Ingrid Nilsson coming to Everfree Northwest 2015. Ingrid was skeptical 10 years ago when a mystic told her that her life's work would all be about her voice. Since then, she has been heard as Raspberry Tort in four seasons of Strawberry Shortcake as Mod Pie and My Little Pony, as Punk Rocker Sloan in an upcoming Barbie movie, and more. In a career that was spanned over a decade and includes on-camera work, she has had the pleasure of appearing with some Hollywood's gems. A classically trained singer, Royal Conversatory of Music, actor, UBC Honor Degree in Theater, and dancer, Ingrid was raised on the sound of music and old-school musicals. She lives in Vancouver, B.C., where you can find her teaching yoga and meditation, biking around town, and promoting positive body image in schools with non-profit. Project True. So come to Seattle May 29-31 in Seattle, Washington, and see Ingrid at this year's Everfree Northwest Convention. This, <sighs> this news report brought to you by Stalkers Weekly, because we just found out where she lives and what she does all day. <laughs> what? Uh, oh, I found that a little weird. No. You can find this person at this address where she <laughs> likes to bike around the town and spend time at the yoga class <laughs> meditating. King! We did not say her address, <laughs> we her, say her approximate whereabouts. No, oh, she, God. she lives in Vancouver and there's some dedicated people out uh, there. I'm just saying, that's... <laughs> well, King, well read, but we, wow. We, we don't question our friends from every Northwest, and... If you guys don't know, Every Free Northwest is holding a con this May 29th to the 31st at Seattle, Washington. So if you're in the vicinity, go there and have fun because if I do remember right, they also had Lee, Lee, to- Lee Tokars going there and a lot of awesome people. So if you have the cash or you're really going there, just say hi to Ingrid and Lee and whoever else you meet there. For those of you who don't really remember the name of Lee Tucker, he is uh, Snips and the very flamboyant serpent Stephen Magnet. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's that's <laughs> Lee <stop>. Tucker. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, your mustache. That that guy. <laughs> yeah. So, like I said, if you're in the vicinity, go there, man. Tickets are on sale now. And well, what can I say? <laughs> I wish I was at the con right now because cons are fun. When the the last con we went was fun, right, James? It was awesome. It was awesome. Sucks that there's going to be no back 2015, but I might be going to Brownie Scott 2015, so that's good. Yay! Awesome, awesome, awesome. But talking about conventions and the hiatus that we were in, um, since ponies are out yesterday or last night, um, I have a serious question for you guys. How did you guys survive the ponyless uh, hiatus? It's like 330 days or 10 months, 26 days, including the date's end. So, how did you guys survive the hiatus? So, I'm going to go for our... I'm the ghost of cake. (laughs) I'm going to start with James first. No. (laughs) Do you want to start with me? Do you want to go alphabetically? Um... How do we usually do this? Because the review shows always start with Silver and me. Uh, how do we do it reverse? Well, that's that we're doing. I'm going then. to be talking. 
I'm going to be talking a lot. Let's go reverse and start with Rom, then oh, Norman, yeah. then Keek, and then me. All right. Fair enough. Well, I survive relatively simple. <laughs> I always have something to do. If it's not watching an episode, then at least I'll water the plants or learn how to draw something else. Or just, I don't know, make more sandwiches, I guess. <laughs> So that's how you've been dealing with the hiatus for the, the that hiatus. year? The hiatus didn't really bother me. I mean, there's always something to do. If not the original show, then the fandom will keep me entertained. I mean, there's still music, there's still content, there's still something coming from that direction. So that was something to, you know, kill time with. Hmm. All right, all right. So were you, how many hiatus were you in? Uh, I think this is my first one. I mean, I joined the fandom when... When did I join the fandom, actually? I think when season three was about to start and season two was about to end. I think. I'm not, I'm not positively sure now. When was that? So that would be, if you start off season three, that will make you two hiatus. And as, I, I forget things a lot. Hmm. Because I'm always busy, man. I'm never bored. <laughs> There's always something to do. That's so. why no hiatus bothers me. Hmm, good, 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 good. And as for me, well, this would be my fourth hiatus because I was there since season one. Oddly enough, the, when I got in, I was just a regular person in the crowd. And when I think the past two, last two episodes, I was in the stream watching it live with other people and that got me really excited and <laughs> joining the whole fandom there and making a podcast after that. I think I started doing a podcast after Lesson Zero. And from that point on, wow, everything seems to be topsy-turvy. <laughs> and how did I spend my whole time dealing with the fandom or the hiatus? I'm guessing besides creating podcasts, I've been doing other activities in other works or other fan fandom and funny enough i went to buck this year and met most of my friends that's a way to kill off the boredom of waiting for a new season what about you king i didn't feel like i really survived anything i mean this is my first hiatus uh my hiatus virgin <laughs> and it didn't feel that long to me like people say oh how did you survive I'm like it i feel like i watched the end of season four not long ago it didn't feel that long and then you told well, how many days was it? 330 30 or something like that? Yep, yep. Whatever it was he said, yeah. Didn't feel that long at all. Not even remotely. <coughs> um, I, I suppose if I, I say survived, I've been drawing a lot of comics, pictures, reading fictions, watching videos, making videos, getting jumped onto this podcast, hmm. uh, going to conventions. Um, yeah, no, it just didn't feel that long. So I don't feel like I survived. It's more like a, I don't know. It just didn't feel that long ago, which I think I'm I'm alone in this opinion because everyone else I've said is like, oh, that was, took so long, and I'm like, did it? Maybe maybe 2014 just went like really quickly for me. I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. I mean, I do understand what you're saying, and since you're a first year um, guy in the hiatus, probably you were hyped for it. Hmm. But James, what about you? Uh, it helps when your uh, living is based off of drawing ponies. I have been super busy getting commissions done, updating movies late, doing uh, a comic. I'm doing a comic as a, at the time that I am recording this with you guys. Uh, finishing one of the pages, finishing another commission for another client, uh, building more relationships, taking care of things in the house, gathering a lot of uh, movies from my friends and fans. Getting into Game of Thrones is a very good show. You should watch it. Uh, I And I think that's pretty much it. I mean, oh, and of course, replaying Mass Effect and playing Pokemon and do, doing more stuff that is not just ponies. And that is the thing that you should take into account is that uh, being part of a fandom is a beautiful experience, uh, generally. For the majority, it's a beautiful experience. It's never something that should be taken as negatively. Uh, despite the sour grapes that you might get when you are in the fandom. But there is more things out there than just the one fandom that you can be a part of. I was watching one of the streams that Ponyville Live uh, had 
for Babscon that is still going at the point that we are recording this. And it was Boys of Equestria uh, Season 2, where they have a bunch of amateur voice actors, and they have them judged by Andrea Lee, Mantara Stone, and a few other voice actors from the from the show. And one of the tests that they put them through is, can you talk about other things that you like besides ponies in a voice of your choice? And when it came to one of the girls that was doing the the the, the contest, she ended up winning. By the way, oh. she was yeah, she was she was very good. She ended up winning the contest, but she couldn't talk about anything else other than ponies. Hmm. <laughs> and okay, you're in the stage, you have a lot of people looking at you, you kind of block in that point, and you get very nervous. But it got me thinking: what other things do I like aside from ponies? And then I realized that that's one of the things that got me through the hiatus, is that I don't just do ponies. I, I'm a fan of a lot of things. You know what, James? You saying that reminds me of how I started Magic almost a year ago. Mm. Oh, Magic the Gathering also helped, of course. Yeah, I mean, like, Going to a con as well. Yeah, true, organizing true. the convention. Holy cow. <sighs> Yeah, yeah. Every it's 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 been a busy hiatus, and to be honest, I'm kind of a veteran at this point because this is the fourth that I go <laughs> through. I, I went through the hiatus between seasons one and two, two and three, three and three and four, and now four and five. This is nothing. Yeah. I mean, do you want do you want a, a long hiatus? Look at the Firefly fandom. <laughs> hiatus status permanent. <laughs> long. Ouch. Look at the look at the look at the invader look at the invader sim, uh, fandom. What kind of? Oh my god! Uh, yeah, the guy, the the guy who does this invader scene, he's such a. That's not a word. When it comes to uh, talking to the fans, he's like, "Hey guys," uh, his his April Fool's joke is always, "Hey guys, invader scene is coming out of hiatus." Not. <laughs> uh, that's just jerk. mean. That's just mean. But no, no, I mean. Or or or, or the Valve fandom, Half Life <laughs> no. Three when. <laughs> Jeez, that is a hiatus. What I am going to go. Or... I am going to go around poking everybody in the eye. I don't care. You, come around. Come here. I'm going to poke you in the eye. Ouch. No, I mean, Half-Life 3, you poke, just don't poke, say poke, poke. Half-Life 3, you just don't say it, man. Like, that's a joke among yourself. It's amazing. Things that have happened during the release of Half-Life 3. My Little Pony had five seasons. <laughs> so true. There so were true. three... Uh, the, the, a, uh, a black man became president of the United States. <laughs> They killed Osama Bin Laden. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, so uh, true. Tumblr was created. Why? Wow, so true. Facebook was created. Twitter was created. You know what, James? When you think of... Yeah. It is depressing now, isn't it? <laughs> it's wow. like things that happened be- uh, 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 before the release of Half-Life 3. Oh, James. All of those things. Sony produced three... Sony produced four consoles. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, wow! No, well, no. actually, advantage actually, you also know, look at it like this: um, the fo- you know the iPhone, uh-huh. the iPhone came out, but it wasn't as advanced as it was for like three G and stuff and all the apps. Mm-hmm. I remember watching uh, a show as a kid. Uh, you know how they, they predicted the future, and they would all have our handheld personal devices attached to our wrist. Mm-hmm. They weren't far off. Look at your phone. True. And I'm still waiting for Half Life Three. <laughs> I've got this advanced piece of technology that can connect to the world. Oh, God. I'm talking to you now from the other end of the country. Where's Half-Life 3? <laughs> you, you know, when you think about it that way, this is depressing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we are now talking about Half-Life 3. Uh, but you guys take this into account. Yes, this hiatus was the longest we have ever faced. It was almost a year. Mm-hmm. It hasn't been mm-hmm. a year for... Yeah, it was almost a year. It was 330 days or something yep, like that. 10 months. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a super long hiatus. We got through it. Yeah. I mean, we are still here. We are still talking about ponies and we are still enjoying our favorite show. Yep, yep. Everything, everything is, he's, everything he's is looking at the dead bronies behind it. <laughs> we need t-shirts that says that? we survived the hiatus. Do, do you know, it's like, it's funny how when you, um, when you measure how the fandom has evolved between seasons one and two was the outburst of biggest amount of fans. Mm-hmm. And then when season two was on the, uh, was on full swing. We had a lot of people becoming fans of the show as well. Mm-hmm. Season 3 was when the situation started to decrease. Uh, season 4 was very kind of like back and forth. It was like a lot of people were leaving, but a lot of people were, were coming. And I think that after season 4 ended, 
they changed so many things in the show that some of the most conservative and like purist bronies decided to just cut cut ties and stop watching, which fair enough. I mean, this show is not going to appeal to everyone. I mean, if you stay perfect, if you live, awesome. As long as you don't make a big fuss about it and don't say, I live because the show has become a... That's not a word! And it's awful and it sucks. No, you're not living because the show has become bad. You're living because you don't like the show anymore, which is perfectly fair. Mm. True, true. I feel like we're four survivors coming out of a vault. Like, <laughs> after the hype bombs fell, Norman yeah, enters look, the vault door. <laughs> blinking looking into, into the, the sky. Sunlight. With Jay eyes Clark. half closed. Like, comes out, oh. takes a deep breath. Wow. Oh, Pick. it smells like Carry birth roll. art and drama. They're <laughs> leaving a brony behind. <laughs> no, and they but... look out into the distance and say, we survived the hiatus. <laughs> but you know what? Honestly right, speaking... About this. <laughs> oh, God, no. But honestly speaking, right, I mean, we survived uh, the hiatus in our own ways. Like, the pattern that I'm seeing right now is we all got really busy in our own life. Like, um, you guys do art, and I got myself busy with the podcast and also doing or also playing Magic the Gathering. So we all did our own thing. We all got I'm assuming all we all have work that our real life needs to do. So we have that too. And also well, the fandom didn't die. Equestria Daily have been has been posting news. Uh, merchandise has been out there for us to buy and whatnot. And content is still being made by the fans so those comics those fanfics those musics those a lot of in between them are out there and also if you're in a skype group no matter from that part of the internet or whatever you are i'm sure that you guys have been talking to them and i'm sure you started off as a pony group but talk about almost anything so I'm seeing that we all dealt with the hiatus in our own way and we all met a lot of people in the process. So being in this fandom, waiting for a new season to start, I think it's kind of special when the show or the episode ends or the season ends till the next one's coming to start. You'll be seeing a lot of people and talking to a lot of friends. Yeah, I made quite a few friends this this season. Not season, uh, hiatus. Made quite a few friends, um, lost a few, made a few. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I feel like I'm playing, you know, poker. I've lost a few chips, gained a few chips. <laughs> Just realized I compared my friends to a bunch of chips. <laughs> hmm. I need to reevaluate my thinking. <laughs> no, it's potato true, chips. It's Norman's, a, Norman's a $10 chip, James is 100 and roll, you can be a 50. <laughs> oh, <laughs> what the I am not worth that much. Uh, I'm worth more, <laughs> jerk. <laughs> Oh, okay. You sure, I think he was pretty really accurate about you, man. <laughs> but no, I mean... We're talking about hype bombs now, shots are being fired. <laughs> no, but um, is it true what you're saying, James? I have to admit, out of all the uh, out of all the hiatus that I had to face, this is the one where I made the most of friends. Mm-hmm. Um, it doesn't It doesn't count that I became friends with Sketchy during the hiatus between seasons three and four. Because then, after meeting Sketchy and knowing him a lot better, that opened me to meet a few more people, like Bev, Hazel, Mecca, Ray. Uh, thanks to your show, Norman, I ended up making lots of friends. Um, and being on the NBA show has opened the doors to meeting more people. And definitely after going to Buck, that <laughs> definitely opened up the, the, the floodgates. I cannot remember. Uh, this is going to sound very selfish, but I actually... This is overwhelming because I spend more time talking on Skype to people than to dra- drawing. <laughs> when I when I disconnect on Skype, I am not actually going to bed. I have to keep drawing, and I don't need I don't want any distractions. But is that I connect on Skype and I get between two and five messages, <laughs> like two and five people uh, talking to me and all that, and I'm like, oh god, okay, okay, all right. Hey, how are you doing? How is it going? Sub. Hey, man, yeah, that's so cool. And meanwhile, Photoshop is resting, resting there, wondering how or when is this guy going to get to work with me? Uh, Come on, we need fi- we need to finish these pictures, or else the banks are going to take your house, <laughs> like they, they they so want to. Oh, so, y- yeah. Yeah. Oh no. But still, um, I, I, I do... just get group messages. I don't get private ones anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody loves me. 
Uh, I, I, have the, I, oh, well. I have my notification settings for only James and Cork and Movie and Slate. Nothing else. It's 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 out of convenience. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, the the way I look at it, like it's true. This hiatus, this um season four to five, I notice a pattern where I'm mostly online, and you know what? I I think I blame Team OK. Blaming Team OK <laughs> for making more friends. I blame you, Team OK. Anybody else got something to say about Team OK specifically or the hiatus? <laughs> <laughs> Anything, man. Because I've got some things to say about Team OK. <laughs> but hiatus? No, I, I've said all I can. We can be here <laughs> until tomorrow. Yeah. But well, that season 5 episode, wasn't it hype? <laughs> no, shut up. We're going to talk about it on, re- on the review, not here. This uh-huh. is not the place. But people want to hear our opinion so much. No, shut up. They don't want to We're hear our opinion. We're on the internet. Who cares about our opinions? <laughs> Tumblr! Everybody makes a big fuss about everybody else's opinions. <laughs> exactly. Oh, boy. But anyway, talking about season five openers, um, did you guys know that Mike Vogel's writing for season six? Dun dun dun! Oh, what? Is he? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yes, yes, oh, yes, yes, yes. wow! Season five has just started. <laughs> yep. They already got yes. season six I'm confirmed. Like, I'm getting more hyped for season six. Uh, oh, Jesus. Anyway, yeah, okay, okay. Do you want to, do you want to, get, <laughs> do you want to get even more hyped about it? Do you want to get even more hyped about it? Yes. I can. Okay. Ooh, get ready. Ooh. Here goes the release date of the season, or at least when it says it's been copyrighted, 2015-2016. Standard, yes, normal. <gasps> no, 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 I don't mean standard. We may be ending season five, and not as long as the hiatus that we had to face this time, we may be jumping on season six still within 2015. What? Yeah. It's happening right uh-huh. after? Maybe we have a one-week no, break? No, I don't think it's going to have a one week break, but at least two or three months in between each, each, each season. Like it happened between seasons one and two. The, the hiatus between seasons one and two was like the entire summer. It was like three months or something like that. Isn't the rumors of Equestria Girls three at some point this year? <laughs> yeah, there obviously. Is a, there is or is that next? A, a third? No, there is a third Equestria <laughs> Girls movie, and it's going to be themed around the Olympic Games. Oh, as they say, the Equestria oh, Games. My. God. Wait, this question is they they did that, right? So happy about this fandom. <laughs> the friendship games. Yeah, the friendship oh, games. It's a it's a more PG and less violent version of the Hunger Games. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. But in anyway that, that case is not about how many people you kill until you are left alone, it's about how many people you ally with before you get killed by <laughs> McGuffin. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. See, you said the friendship games, and I thought, is that like the Special Olympics? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> like the Equestria games. But but still, back on the topic of Mike Vogel. Um, He's crippled. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. Anyway, anyway, back on the topic of Mike Vogel. We all know who Mike Vogel is, right? Yeah. Kind of, sort of, maybe. Yes. He's the cre- creative CEO of Hasbro. Uh-huh. Or used to be the creative CEO of Hasbro but, until but, he stepped but for down. Some of the yes. stupid people that might not be listening. Mm, true, true. Some of the uh, the more stupid ones. Why did we go over who said Mark Vogel is? Huh? <clears throat> true, true. Ro, why not don't you take I this one? To know. All right. And in today's news time, Mike Vogel writing for season six. You may know Mike Vogel from various promos over the years, along with his hosting of the San Diego Comic Con panels. He used to be the VP of marketing for Hasbro Studios, but made the switch over to the creative site earlier in the year when the MLP movie was announced. Needless to say, he's a pretty awesome dude. What kind of episode can we expect from him? What madness takes place in the mind of Mike Vogel? I suppose we'll find out next year. Links can be found in the show notes below. So, like Rose said, and like we all mentioned before, Mike Vogel used to be the VP of marketing for Hasbro Studios, but made the switch. And here's the thing. For VP to be interviewed or to be on shows is kind of hard because he represents the company. Now that he's in the creative department, it's easy for him to jump onto shows like ours or any other online. So, since he's the writer... He planned this. (laughs) 
<laughs> we planned this. <laughs> no, but well, seriously. Well, it's not it's not that weird because you know how Bobby Corno is the editor on the on the MLP comics, mm-hmm. but he's also written a couple of comic books. He wrote the Applejack Micro and the Friends Forever Applejack and Major Mare. Well, James, um, he, he's the editor and stuff, but that's kind of normal for him in a comic book set. Like him here, he's the vice president of marketing for Hasbro Studios. So oh, who says he doesn't know how to write? I'm I mean, not, I'm I, not saying I'm that he actually, Sorry. Yeah, yeah, I, I know, I know, I know about the, skept- <laughs> the skepticism because you usually imagine a CEO. With, you know, the suit with, a, a, um, a type machine, a typewriter in his brain that can only write ones and zeros and <laughs> no. sign with a dollar sign and all that. I know, what I know you, the preconception you, of that, but <laughs> you, yeah, you cannot, you cannot, um, no. write it off as, or, or personally, I'm not worried. I think it's going to be a very interesting take. No, no. I am hoping to see an episode where he makes a mockery out of the whole, uh, <laughs> A uh, corporate image no, I'm not that Hasbro that, has built around itself. I'm not saying that he can't write. What I'm saying is that it's going to be interesting for us to see, or it was interesting for me to see that he stepped down from a very high position in the company. Because for him to be a VP of marketing and stepping down to be a contract writer, I'm assuming his contract because none of them are permanent stuff, that if I remember right. So, for him to be a contract writer, that's going to be an interesting um, thing for the change. And I can't wait to see what he writes because I'm sure he knows how to write a story. If he can't, I don't think Hasbro is going to put him in that position. Yay! Congratulations, Mike. Hope you come here and we can talk to you because we really want to talk to you. Personally, I would really love to, uh, to talk to Mike Bogle. Yeah, man, yeah, man. Like, he was there from the very beginning. I, I'm not sure. I, I think he was there close to the ground when the fandom was starting to pop up. He started the fandom. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> I Definitely have to check out what else he has worked on. Yeah, I mean, he's an awesome If he guy. has worked on anything in such a, from, from such a perspective. But I'm really looking forward to what he has to, uh, he can bring to the table. Yeah, I think this might be his first writing gig. So we have to see what he produced because I, I got no idea what to say because with other people, we at least know their backgrounds. Like some of the writers were writing for Ed, Ed and Eddie and also Ben 10. And what else did they work on? Um, DuckTales? No, DuckTales was something else. But you you know what I mean. With Mike, what 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 did he work on? He's the unknown. He, we can expect great things. True, it's always yeah. the one, the quiet ones that come out with the greatest ideas. I swear, that, that's how it works. Speaking of quiet, no, 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 no. Anyway, so what else? What else should we talk about then? Well, that's it for news time because with the season five premiere, there's not much pony news to cover besides the premiere, unless well, reviews going to be covered on another show. So. Uh, can't say much. So, we can't hype it up. reviews are a type of news? Pardon? No, I've, right. Listen, already got the, the season five hype bomb dropped on me. Just been dropped on with the fact we might get season six and the Question of Girls 3 movie. If I get another hype bomb, I'm going to blow up. <laughs> well, that's okay, in that case, still. in that case, we are going to have a My Little Pony movie in 2017. Oh, that God. And that is actual, that is oh, actual horses. Actual horses, not the Question Girls. Oh wow! Oh, oh god! A dark yeah, heart attack. Yeah. He's, oh, he's going. He's going. Are you being serious? Going. Yep. I am not joking, you... dude. It's happened. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god! Yes. Just my real yes. horses as in live action. <laughs> no. Yes, live action, Rom. Exactly, and they are going to CGI their mouths like they did in Bave. Exactly the same. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be like Doctor Doolittle. Also, one of the characters is going to be voiced by Chris <laughs> Rock. Yeah, no, no, you know, you know, I get it, I get it. I get it. hype I... nuke into... I... No, I know, I know. I know. It turned into a depression nuke. It's going to be, <laughs> oh, it's yeah. going to be like the Smurfs movie. Like, the ponies are going to be in a quest, they go through a portal, and then they're going to appear in, in modern day New York. They're going to be done in CGI, and 
then they are going to meet with Neil Patrick Harris, who happens to be a brony. <laughs> no. And he needs advice to conquer a girl, so the ponies are going to help her, to help him get the girl. No. Yes. Oh my Jeez. god. And yeah, I know, I know that Neil Patrick Harris is gay, but I don't care because in the movies he can play whatever he wants. No. Because he's Jeez, an actor. you lie. No, you know what? As much as that sounds horrible, oh, and it's going to be produced by Michael Bay, and uh, there's going to be explosions at the end. You lie! <laughs> do, you, do you know who would do really well in a live-action pony film? Who? Well, who? John Claude Van Damme. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! No, 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 no! We need Nicolas Cage and Christopher oh. Walken. Yes. Oh yes. Yes. Yes, yes. Back to this you know again. what? As as much as that could be horrible, I'd watch the. That's f- not a word. Out of that. <laughs> oh, oh my god! You know what would be amazing if they went if if next time like they make the Question Girls movie, all the maze dates go through, and because there's too many, it something goes wrong, and they all come out the other side like really manly, like that friendship is manly <laughs> animation, oh, oh, nice. so just sort of walk out like, dun, 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 no. dun, and it's like Nicolas Cage, uh, John Claude Van Damme. Uh, Arnold, Bruce Willis, all these like big tough men, like where I've like Bruce Willis is Fluttershy. I'd watch that. <laughs> oh God, I no, you guys are wrong. The Extendables. Arnold Schwarzenegger comes out with rarity. I've come to make your dresses. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Uh, you guys are so wrong. The, 2000, the 2017 movie is not going to be about that. Oh God. You never know, man. You that. never know. <laughs> Uh, There's a huge gap in right, between I need to find, now I need to find six very manly bronies. <laughs> oh, God. You, I need to you... find very six manly muscular bronies to animate that. Not animate it. Like, record that as a live action Well, we, we have Dusty, so we just need to few, fill in a few gaps. <laughs> yeah. I think I broke James. <laughs> no, I'm still here. Sorry. Like I, I said, I'm James. talking to several people and drawing. I cannot. Um, I, I, it's, it's difficult to type and talk at the same time, but I love the idea of... Fluttershy being played by Bruce Willis. <laughs> I, I was just trying to figure out who could be who could be Applejack, and I almost uh, immediately thought. I think it'd be better Norris, if he was voice. I thought on Chuck oh, Norris. I really want to go back and animate Fluttershy kicking in the door, going "Yippee ki yay." That's not a word. <laughs> no, 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 no. Bruce. Yippee ki yay. That's not a word. <sighs> yes. Oh my god. Okay. Oh, uh, right. Clearly, clearly the episode has end. Ay ay ay. <laughs> If you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at gmail.com. And if you'd like to email us personally, links are in the show notes. You can also catch the show's Twitter account at the MBS Show. Sweetie Bot will groan and moan about this episode. Uh, Don't worry, I disabled uh, that feature. Okay, cool. Um, okay. <laughs> also, you can catch me at Norman Sands. Norman so, says it's the end of the show. Norman says it's the end of the show. We need to go. I figured you've got like a, a is it a gig counter where they they test for radioactive like clicks. And it's like it's in centimeters. So, right, we're in the red zone. We need to leave. We need to leave. <laughs> abort podcast. Abort podcast. Go 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 out the window. Probably I don't know, but anywho, you can catch me at Norman Sanzo. I tweet about toys, food, and whatever tickles my fancy. And what's tickling my fancy is season five. I'm so hyped. I can't wait for the next episode. Also, James, where can I catch you? Uh, you can find me on my Twitter where I have been more uh, more active as of late. You cannot uh, leave Twitter aside anyway. It's a source of publicity that you have to exploit. <laughs> and it's easy to share things over there as well. So, hey, why not? So, yeah, you can find me on Twitter at James Cork. And you can check my movie Tumblr on askmovieslate.tumblr.com. James, I remember you told us an interesting story about the Twitters. What was it again? What do you mean? The one before season 5 started? You're talking about the tweet when I uh, uh, when I said, guys, be respectful to the show staff and to everyone working on the episode tomorrow during the premiere. Yeah. And then I tagged it, MLP season 5, MLP of IM, and threw it out. And for some reason, I, I was so disappointed because a lot of people retweeted it. And I thought, this is something that you guys should know by default. I mean, you should be respectful and careful with what you say to the people that work on the show, because this is their job. And then you come around with your reviewing and your analysis and your vitriol wishful thinking, and you ruin things. And you make everything very awkward. So... Keep it down, okay? Don't, don't, don't. Just sit down and enjoy your episode of Horses. And then, out of all the people that retweeted it. Keep it down, you kids! (laughs) 
No, not really, because it's like, you can complain and criticize the episode all you want, but you shouldn't tweet something like, this episode is... That's not a word! And then tag it with Tara Strong, Megan McCarthy, Jason Fees, and Big Jim Miller, because that gets to them, and that really hinders on their enthusiasm. Like, they feel they are doing something wrong. I, I, that hurts. Yeah, I know, I get what you mean. I really want a review to be like, this yeah. episode was really bad, this is why, hey, hey, hey. But I love you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Just, it's, I, I love you all, well, great show. It's well, there is a difference between yeah. There, there is a difference. There, there is a difference between top between tough love, which is what you just described, and being just an unlikable vitriolic. That's not a word. So, it's it's no, not yeah, the same. But the, the story that Norman is talking about, we, who like uh, like the little that's not a word that he is because he just threw this on my face. <laughs> the story that he's talking about is that a certain M.A. Larson retweeted that. And then he tagged me and added, shut up. <laughs> Which I, oh, of oh, course, oh. subsequently retweeted it and added, um, and added, but of course, you can, you can blame M.A. Larson for everything. You can be mean to him all you want. Tagged M.A. Larson, MLP of IM season, MLP of IM, MLP season five. To which it was then favorited and retweeted by Fall Papers and M.A. Larson himself. <laughs> So, so yeah, said, be respectful to these guys. He turned around and went, "Shut up." <laughs> That's crazy. funny. Funny enough, I love that. Funny enough, <clears throat> funny enough, I didn't know that Emma Larson was a story editing and writing the season premiere. So <laughs> that was that was that was a joy. An entire season without Emma Larson, and he comes back at full force. Yep. <laughs> you, you, you're going to hear more about that on the episode review. Believe yep, me. Yep. Yep. Uh, but anyway, Ro, where can they catch you? You can find me at my Twitter, Relicious underscore art, my Tumblr, ReliciousGallery.tumblr.com, or my DeviantArt, Relicious.DeviantArt.com. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And King, where can they find you, my friend? You can find me at the normal place of DeviantArt, Kick-Ass King, or Picato, Kick-Ass King, but I'm also in two new locations, a place called Ponies Backstage. I'll be updating... Uh, blogs of what, what I think of the new season and past episodes, but you can also ask the cast of My Little Pony what it was like to record it. Like, uh, maybe you can ask them what they thought about recording this new, newest episode, which will be fun. <laughs> and finally, at Kick-Ass King 1 on YouTube, where you can watch my blind reactions to the new season 5 episodes of My Little Pony. I don't know a thing about the show I've not seen any trailers, no screenshots. It's completely blind. And, of course, the hype bomb hit halfway through the video. <laughs> uh, I'll also be uploading Let's Plays for this podcast, as well as maybe some reviews with some friends. You'll have to ch- stop by and have a look to find out. True, true. Yay, it seems that our ideal hell of having an LP channel is going to be realized. Yay, and King's going to help. Woohoo! Still learning the ropes myself. Uploading hey. videos as we speak, also <laughs> editing them. <laughs> no problem, oh. my friend, no problem, my friend. And also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio, and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyVilLive.com. Links will be in the show notes. So, I have been Norman Sanzo. I have been a Spanish person. I am Relicious. I've been really tired, but I had a great time here. I'm kick King. <laughs> And we'll see you next week with even more Season 5 content. Yay! I'm so hyped! Ah! Dude, calm down. Yeah, relax, Norman. Don't worry. In a couple of months, Season 5 will be over and we'll be back to the hiatus. Uh, uh, I, need a, I need something sweet. I'll see you guys next week. Bye. Peace out. Bye, guys. Goodbye. Goodbye.